There is a model or a system you can say that takes natural language task descriptions like the prompts used for large language models to train a small special purpose model for deployment. Introducing Prompt to Model, a project that was released a few months back that is able to generate deployable models from instructions. From a single prompt, you can get a fully functional model. They do this by retrieving existing datasets and pre-trained models, which is able to generate datasets using LMs as well as fine-tuning the model on its own. The results show that the models trained with the prompt to model is able to outperform GPT 3.5 Turbo by an average of 20% while being much smaller, up to 700 times. This is a method that also assesses the model's reliability before deployment. Just take a look at this demo video which is showcasing how a prompt is given to a prompt to model to construct a new deployable model based off the instructions given. This is the instruction over here which shows or which states that your task is to generate an answer to natural to a natural question. In this task the input is a string that consists of both a question and a context passage. The context is a descriptive passage related to the question and contains the answer. And the question can range from math, cultural, social, geometry, biology, history, sports, technology, science, and so on. Now, in this case, the prompt is given, and then what happens is that once the prompt is given to prompt the model, it starts to parse the prompt by giving the model an input and output for the prompt template. Now, as you go into the video, you will start to see that the model then retrieves the data set that is needed for this prompt. Now, in this case, you can select the data set as well as the one that you would want to use for the deployable model and then it comes to the next step where you're able to retrieve the best model for the prompt the model then generates like the model as in the actual framework generates a final data set trains the model and then it finally evaluates it you will then get the output of your model which is then deployable which is absolutely insane now this is something that we're going to take a look at throughout today's video as we go in exploring how you can get started with prompt to model take a look at the research paper and so much more so definitely stay tuned and with that thought guys thank you guys so much for watching and let's get straight into the video if you would like to access our private discord where you can access subscriptions to ai tools for free you have consulting you have investment opportunities collaboration and so much more definitely take a look at this link in the description below if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one with me where you can access my consulting services where i can help you grow your business or basically give you a lot of different types of solutions with ai definitely take a look at the calendar link in the description below hey what is up guys welcome back to another youtube video at the world of ai in today's video we're going to be taking a look at prompt to model now this is a project that talks about how large language models are being used to actually build natural language processing systems now as we know lms are really helpful and we know that they also have drawbacks such as needing a lot of computational power to actually have it functional and being accessed through apis now what was actually proposed by the creators of this project is that they wanted to create the solution by introducing prompt to model which is like a method that takes the task description in natural language similar to what lms use from prompts given to them and in this case prompt to model basically uses it to train a specific type of model for deployment they do this by retrieving existing data sets and pre-trained models to generate data sets using the large language model and the fine tuning of that model in this case the results show that it's even trained better than GPT 3.5 by an average of 20% while being much smaller. And we can see that this deployable model is then usable through various different faucets. And this is something that people who do not have the right coding needs to basically create something like this or deploy a project like this, do it so easily. Now you might be wondering, how is this possible? Well, we'll take a look at this figure, which takes a look at the architecture of prompt model. It is something that shows the structure and the system that is designed to make it easier to create small and accurate machine learning models from a single prompt. You can see that the system is automating different steps and machine learning processes like collecting data and it's able to train the model, evaluate it, as well as basically have it deployable. 
Now, in the middle of all of this, you can see that there is an automatic collection system. It's something that uses two different types of methods. You firstly have the retrieving data sets as well as the generating data sets using a large language model. Now these data sets have been labeled through data relevance as well as through other types of user needs. Now then the system is then using a pre-trained model which is fine tuning them using the training data from the collected data sets previously. And we can see that in this figure over here which basically retrieves the data set and then trains it based off the context that you wanted to actually have it trained upon. Now, you're also able to have the system create a user interface for interacting for the model on the web. And this is something that we saw based off the video demo. Now, this is a system that is very flexible and can be adjusted any sort of step. So this is something that could be implemented in different ways and could be turned to different contexts if needed. Now, the primary input for users is a prompt. And this is something as we would do with a large language model. We give them prompts so that it can generate various different types of things. But this is a prompt that includes an instruction. And in other cases, you're even allowed to give it examples which showcase the behavior of what the model could be deployed upon. Or now let's take a look at some evaluation metrics for our GPT 3.5 in comparison to prompt the model. Now we can see that this was tested based off of different methods and this is evaluating how the model is able to produce various different types of models. Now in two out of the three tasks we can see that prompt the model is a model that outperforms GPT 3.5 even though the model used for comparison it is so much larger. Now the interesting thing about this is that the model used by prompt the model is 700 times smaller and yet it's able to outperform GPT 3.5. Now. There are other cases where they tested uh, Japanese to Python task in the other types of methods, which showed that it didn't perform so well in comparison to GPT 3.5 Turbo. It's all about perspective. If you look at all the good things in prompt model, you will just basically say that it's way better, where the real truth is that GPT 3.5 Turbo is really good and it's not that it's not better than prompt model but we can see that there's some characteristics of prompt model that outpace gpt 3.5 turbo like the one that we saw before now if you want to get started in using prompt model to generate your own deployable ready-made model you can definitely do so by three different methods you can use it through notebook or through Google Colab, which is a method that I'll showcase after I showcase the installation process. But you can also install it locally. And this is something that you can do fairly easily, but you're gonna need to make sure that you have the prerequisites fulfilled. You need to make sure that you have Git installed, Python installed, you need to make sure that you have Visual Studio installed and have an open AI API key ready. Now, once you have these four prerequisites ready, you can then move forward with the installation process. First things first, you need to go onto the GitHub repo, click the green button over here, copy the repo link, go onto command prompt, type in the command git clone, paste the link in and click enter. Once you have done that, you can go into the prompt to model folder by typing in CD prompt to model. And then you just need to install the requirements needed for prompt to model. Afterwards, you can input the actual API key that is needed to have this functional. And once that is done, you can launch it by this simple command, which we saw over here. You simply just need to copy and paste this into your command prompt and you can start creating small models based off prompts. Now they have a tutorial on how you can write good prompts. So I'll leave this link in the description below so that you can access it fairly easily. But this is a way that you can write different prompts to generate various different types of models, which are obviously going to be in small in size, but it's something that you can have generate ready-made models. Now, in this next step, I'm just going to briefly showcase the Google Colab version of using prompt the model to generate your deployable model. It's fairly easy. First things first, what I recommend is that you change the runtime or even before that you want to copy this into your own drive. This is something that you can save into your own Google uh, Drive, or you can definitely copy it into GitHub Gist. Now, once you have copied that, you want to click on runtime, change the runtime to the best hardware accelerator that is available for you. And once that is set to the best one, you can then move forward with the installation process. This is first by clicking on the installation for prompt to model on your Google Colab, input your API key. Once that is done, just keep on clicking all the 
boxes that are needed to have this functional. Now what you want to do is specify your prompt. In this case, you want to explain your task and provide a few examples for the prompt template, which we can see over here. You want to give an input and an output, a couple of examples as to what you want the prompt to respond with. Now they basically specified in the tutorial over here, which showcases how you should write good prompts. And this, in this case, they say a good prompt can make the generated data set follow exactly the format of demonstration. It contains the instructions uh, and few shot examples. In this case, they specified that the instructions should contain the following, the exact format description for the input and output. So we can see this over here. It gives the exact format repeatedly and if we go back it says that the exact contents of each part of the input and output and their relationship as possible as you can so you want to keep this like properly in each step that you like properly as in you want to make sure that there's consistency consistency in that process sorry about that but it then states that you need to have a range of possible inputs for example and the question can range from math, cultural, social, etc. And this is something that we saw in the demo video where they stated this in the input. So this is something that you can add on following your instruction. Now, in this case, we can see that they actually did this as well. And as you go forward, you basically then move to the next step, which parses the prompt. You're able to retrieve the model, retrieve the and process the data set. This is where you can select certain things as you're continuously generating your own deployable model. And at the end, as you keep on clicking through all of these different sections, you will be able to fine tune the model based off your own like preferences, or you can just go with the ready-made fine tuning process that the model has already developed. And then you can then try this out onto a local UI, which is deployable within prompt to model. This is something that they have incorporated in the final generation of your deployable model. Now, in this case, you can download it based off of, off of Google Colab, and you can definitely do so from the table of, over here in the folder files tab. And that's basically it for today's video guys this is a great framework that will help you generate deployable models based off the instruction that you give it now obviously these are small special purpose models that should be used for small cases not something that would be deployed for larger use cases but this is something that will be very helpful for a lot of people so definitely take a look at this as i'll leave all these links in the description below it would also mean the world to me guys if you guys can go check out the patreon link in the description below if you want to access our private discord which comes with a lot of different features now if you want to follow us on twitter definitely do so so you can stay up to date with the latest ai news and lastly make sure you guys subscribe turn on the notification bell like this video and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest ai news but with that thought guys thank you guys so much for watching have an amazing day and i'll see you guys fairly shortly peace out fellas